All right. So as promised, here is a review of Oxygen OS 11.1.4.4 update for the OnePlus Nord, which many of you have been wanting to try because the older versions are a big mess, and that's totally understandable. As things like notification delays should just not be there. But here we are still looking for an answer to should I update to this version or not? And if you really want an answer, watch this video till the end. Also make sure to tap on that subscribe button to keep me motivated. Now let's quickly jump into the issues that have really been fixed with this update and some insights to this update. First up, well after this update, OnePlus contacts application has just stopped working for many users and it is crashing as soon as you tap on a contact. Thanks bug plus. Anyways, you can now install the latest APK that I have mentioned in the description area. So download that APK and install it directly. After that, give the permissions and it will start working as usual. But you get this, you have a disabled permission message, right? Don't worry, all you have to do is long press on the contacts application, go to the app info, go to the permissions tab and now deny and allow all the permissions one by one. And that message will be gone forever. As simple as that. Also the dialer app and auto call recording feature is working fine. So you don't need to worry about all that as well. And you can have a better experience now. About that notification delay and I am finally happy to say that it has been fixed for all the applications. And this was a big big issue that stopped me from staying on Android 11. As I used to miss a lot of texts and invites and comments from you guys. But that has finally been taken care of and there are no issues with any application. I tested it out with Telegram, WhatsApp and Instagram. And there have been no issues so far. And I think it's great that they fixed it before not to launch. Wink wink. Coming to the performance aspect now and with popular games and apps, I saw minor frame drops here and there. But there aren't that much as compared to the older versions. And by the way, OnePlus Nord also has that throttling behavior that we saw on the OnePlus 9 series for no reason, as it scores 13-14 points on the browser bench as compared to 45 points on custom rooms, which basically means that CPU gets slowed down whenever you use some of the popular applications that OnePlus is controlling, which shouldn't be the ideal case in my opinion, as custom rooms don't do anything like that and they still give comparable and somewhat better battery life than Oxygen OS. So I think it's pure crap from OnePlus and coming to the BGMI test that many of you asked now. So in the benchmark scores, the performance has slightly improved, but now we cannot trust those as well. So in BGMI, I started off with two games of TDM and the initial temperature was around 33 degrees. And after one match itself, it crossed around 40 degrees, which was not the case with the older versions. But the frame drops are now less as compared to the last version, and that matters. So after two TDM matches, it easily crosses 41 to 42 degrees, which used to be around 40 degrees with the last version. So now I moved on to a classic match and the performance of the device was quite good so far, and I faced no frame drops initially. But after some minutes and whenever the enemies were near, there were some frame drops and glitches occasionally. But these glitches were quite less as compared to the last version, though the CPU temperature now reached around 44 degrees maximum, which is around 2 to 3 degrees more than the last version. But all this did not have any impact as such on the gaming part. And for gaming, it is now quite better than before. And I can recommend this if you wanna switch over to Android 11 now. Though I would still rate Oxygen OS 10 slightly higher than this. The battery life also seems to have been improved with this one as I got around 5 hours of screen on time with 1 hour of PUBG and around 6.5 to 7 hours otherwise, which is decent enough and will vary for all. Apart from that, there are no new features with this update, which was expected, but the app locker issue is also fine now and it works as it should. Lastly about the charging time, well for some reason, my device still takes 1 hour and 15 minutes, which is more than what I got with Android 10, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Overall, yes, you can update to this version as it gets rid of those notification issues and has some improvements here and there, which makes it quite better than the other versions. Anyways, that's it for this video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and press that like button while you are at it. 
so thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one